On this episode of the Bronze Medalist Podcast, we're talking about Flesh Coffin by Lorna Shore. Also, we back! Hash, hashtag. Hash- you put the hashtags at the end, right? Yep. It's we back hashtag. Okay. Get it trending on Twitter, everybody. <laughs> All right, let's do the episode. Hello, everyone, and welcome back to another episode of the Bronze Medalist Podcast. My name is Kale. My name is Jaron. And uh, this is a podcast where we listen to a metal album that neither of us have heard before, and then we talk about it. Uh, I listen to metal all the time. Jaron doesn't. I, l- the... I listen to metal for this podcast. <laughs> that, is the, that is the main conceit of the show, so... Congratulations. Uh, we're back from a, from a couple weeks of break. First off, it was spring break, and Jaron was in lovely Hawaii. I suppose was. We'll, we'll get talking about that in a little bit. And then it was my birthday last Thursday, and uh, I was also prepping for my senior recital. But now that's all over and done with. Yes. Now I have to stress about my senior recital next oh, year. You'll do fine. Okay. I'm sure you'll do fine. You killed yours. It was so good. Thank you. Thank I you like, very much. Oh, oh, oh you. <laughs> but oh, no, that you. it was. Flatterer. I think. I think, uh, and not just to save face on this podcast, but I think it was one of the best that I've ever seen. And at, well, at MSU, you. thank you very much for Welcome. that. I I am sure you mean it. Yeah. It, it seriously. <laughs> it was. It was upbeat, and it was like any like little like technical like trip up you made a joke and it was like he meant to do that he meant to put this like <laughs> technical trip up in his absolutely. video or whatever yes, yeah absolutely i meant all of it yes it was all intentional no matter what uh so anyway how was hawaii it was absolutely amazing it's it's pretty unreal um especially when i was leaving i was driving out of a snowstorm to get to the airport a snowstorm you say yes could that be what's happening outside right now? It absolutely is. Are we in a time loop? Yes. I'm going to Hawaii again tomorrow. <laughs> <laughs> I wish. No. If only. Um, yeah. No, Hawaii was crazy, though. Um, the I swam in the ocean for the first time. I'd seen the okay. ocean before, but I had never like swam in it. Because I saw the ocean by New York, okay, which is like more of a sludge pit yeah. <laughs> than the ocean. Yeah, yeah. Uh, but I mean, you got a couple of rivers draining out into yeah, it right yeah. there. So yeah, it's it, it's pretty mucky. But um, the coolest part, and I, I shouldn't say coolest, the part that took me aback, and this is going to sound really stupid, was how salty the water was. I it's the ocean, and I know yeah, it's salty, yeah. but I got like I didn't close my mouth like a second mm-hmm. like a second too late and i got just a little tiny a splash little bit of water. Salt water and it was almost enough to make me throw up because it was just so <laughs> strong like wow. i knew i knew it was going to be salty yeah. but it was like terribly bad and then it gets up your nose and yep, in your yep. ears and if you don't close your eyes right away you ain't about that salt life, apparently. Yeah, man. And I had that stuff, like, draining out of me. Like, all of, I would just be like... <laughs> that's, that's an unpleasant <laughs> sentence. That is a very unpleasant <laughs> sentence. But I'd just be, like, sitting somewhere, and I'd turn my head, and all of a sudden, like... You know when you get water yeah, in your ear, yeah, and it yeah. kind of feels like it pops, and then it mm. drains? Like, I wouldn't... So satisfying. Yeah, and I wouldn't feel like I had any water in my ear, and I'd, like, turn and look at something, and all of a sudden, I'd have, like, a little bit of water, like, trickle you out of my that, ear. You hear that little crackle, yeah. and then it just kind of drains out, and it, it feels so good. Oh, yeah, I, I agree. But that, like, it, for some reason, salt water just stuck with me a lot okay. more. See, I've never, I've never swam in the ocean. I've seen the ocean twice, once when I was four, and then when I was eight, but, uh... Both the when I was four, I was too young, and my parents did not let me swim in the ocean. It was also March. Uh, we were in LA, but it was like it was like seventy degrees, which is okay. not great swimming weather. Yeah. in the Pacific Ocean, and uh, but my my two older sisters swam in it and <laughs> like nearly froze their asses off. But my parents were like, "Ah, eh, they're older. They'll yeah yeah they can uh, they can make their own mistakes at this point." <laughs> um, and then when we were in Florida, it was just too cold. When I was eight years old. Uh, so I I don't really know what it's like to swim in salt water. I feel like in Hawaii I would be okay, but generally speaking, I kind of have a fear of the ocean. Like the open ocean terrifies yeah. me. I just I would not 
I don't, I don't like it. I don't like it yeah, at all. Bats. But I feel like if the water is nice and clear, I can see the sand below me mm. and there's like a reef or something. I wouldn't mind doing that. Yeah. Because I know enough about like sharks and whatnot to know that if they're getting a little too curious, you just boop them on the snoot real hard yeah. and they'll swim away. As long as you can see the sharks, you're probably going to be all right. Yeah, yeah. It's the sharks that you don't see. Those are the ones that get you. Those are the ones. Those just are the scary like, uh, ones. It's the the bomb that you don't hear that's the one that kills you. They or the tree that uh, doesn't fall. make a sound. <laughs> that falls in the woods when nobody's there to hear. Yep, it. yep. Um, that's the one that'll get you. Yeah, but uh, <laughs> I I have a weird habit of every time I travel, I break into places and it's normal. What? It's, oh, okay, <laughs> and steal things. You're no, going. No. You're <laughs> going to have to. You're going to have to qualify, like, like elaborate. I need on. some context. So I went to New York for a um, kind of a senior class trip. Except not a, it was like if you wanted to go, you could. Um, and we so we were in New York City. We went to Washington D.C. and New York City. We were in um, New York City. And New York City. New York City. It was the greatest thing in my life. No, but we were in New York, and and they, you know, film SNL and the Rockefeller. Yeah. And the last day there, we had to flight that we had to be at back at the hotel at like noon, I think. And so everybody slept in, including our teachers. So we snuck out at like we got up at like seven a.m. and you know just like went and walked around New York City like four high school kids by ourselves. That's a that sounds like a smart idea. Yeah, it was. It was pretty dumb, but it was also really fun. Um, <laughs> that's that's also how it goes. That's to sum up high school. It was really dumb, but it was also really fun. Um, <laughs> but so we were walking through New York City, and we had been to the Rockefeller the night before, and went up to like the top and and got the tour or whatever. But my one friend, his name is Trevor. He is a diehard SNL fan. Like okay. he wanted he wanted nothing more than to get a picture in front of the SNL sign. Yep. So we're walking around the Rockefeller, and it's like you have to pay money to like get in like the main entrance. So we're walking around, and there's a back door kind. It's like on the side, and a guy walks up to it, and he pulls out like a key card, and he swipes it, and it beeps, and the do- you know door buzzes and unlocks. Yeah. He throws it open, walks in, and my friend just like bolts and <laughs> sticks his hand in the door. <clears throat> that guy, John Mulaney. Yeah, <laughs> and and so he throws it open, and we we're like. Trevor and it was like my me and my three other friends we like run in there and there's like people walking around in business suits and oh, they all boy. have name tags yep, and yep. like briefcases and they're just like going to and from so we're like walking around and there's an, a big NBC sign so oh, I like boy. I ran over and took a selfie and Trevor is like going into their staircases that are roped off he is like oh, going no. over the ropes and like going halfway up the oh, staircase to no. see and pretty soon I see that there's a few security guards all talking to each other, like kind of pointing us out in the oh, crowd. Fuck. And so I was like, Trevor, 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 Trevor. And I grabbed him uh, and uh, we hauled him out that side door. And so he didn't get like in trouble yeah. or caught, but like they were coming for us. That is. <sighs> it was, it was scary. <laughs> we could have gotten some serious trouble. Like just. Just seeing a friend of mine go and do that, I would probably just like develop an ulcer on the spot <laughs> and just like double over in pain <laughs> just from the anxiety of like, oh God. It it, it was scary. Trevor's um, going to jail. Yeah. Trevor's and, going to jail. And and like I said, my teacher thought we were still in our room. So oh like we would have been in huge trouble. Um, but we got out, we managed to get back to the hotel um safe and sound. The professor or teacher never found out about it. Um, but then in Hawaii, well, they know now. Yeah, they know now. <laughs> um, we actually did tell them on the um, bus ride from Bismarck back to Minot. We were oh, like, "Hey, we God. we broke into the Rockefeller, by the way," and he didn't believe us for the longest time. <laughs> but uh, when we we're in Hawaii, my little niece loves Moana, and so mm-hmm. there's like the big Disney resort. Yep. And you can't you can get into the main entrance, but they won't let you any farther. Like you know, you have to have your room key and whatever. Yeah. Same scenario. We were walking past it, and my girlfriend was like, let's go see if we can find Moana in here. And I said, well, I'm, you know, we don't have a room there. We can't, like, go in and look. And so we were standing by a gate, like, kind of the beach entrance, and a guy swiped his key card and opened up the door to the <laughs> gate. 
and we were the like exact Zoosh, same, same thing yeah we we waited for somebody and so we like went in there and the whole time i'm like i mean it was hot anyway so I was sweating but i was like sweating nervously yeah. i was like looking around because there were security guards everywhere mm-hmm. and <coughs> i was trying not to look too touristy but then yeah. i thought wait a minute everybody here is a tourist so i like mm-hmm. felt a little more at ease but we walked around and um we couldn't find the lobby and so we were like asking people and they were looking at us really suspicious because you know everybody knows you're not supposed to be in there yeah and they're like how do you not know where the lobby is and we were like oh we just you know got turned around because it's a huge place yeah yeah so we asked a maid and she gave us a really weird look but she pointed us towards the front desk and and so we went and asked and moana moana wasn't there that day okay um so we got out but yeah I, i'm keeping the streak alive oh my god using other people's key cards you to get into buildings far braver than i would ever be see and i wouldn't ever do these things if it wasn't for the people i was with because okay. i'm nervous yeah, the whole yeah. time <laughs> See, and like confidence is the key because I've heard so many times that if you can get into a place, as long as you act like you're supposed to be there, most people will not ask questions. Yeah, because why just, would you? Yeah, they ju- they'll just assume that you're supposed to be there and let you go on your way. Uh, speaking of going on your way, going on our way, we should get to the album. But first, our second ever installment of Bottom Shelf with Kale. Uh, this one I actually didn't get from the bottom shelf, but it cost me five bucks. So that's where it belonged. And you said clearance aisle, right? Yeah, it was in the clearance aisle. I would aisle. say they mid- equate to about the same yeah. thing. <laughs> so I actually don't know what the... Oh, it says... Now it says on the label. So when I bought it, I didn't really know what it was. So this is a fortified wine. It's uh, Wild Irish Rose. It's 100% grape wine with citrus spirits. So uh, it's a, a fortified wine. It's a 750 milliliter bottle that I got for five bucks. So this might be terrible. Honestly, it's probably like cooking grade uh, wine. But who knows? Maybe it's tasty. I've so never had wine. So. You've never had wine? I mean, you've been, you're a church boy. Well, that's true. Church <laughs> wine is nasty. Yeah. You know? Church wine is, they probably use, well, no, this is fortified with spirits. I, I don't know if holy wine is allowed to be fortified with spirits. I, I think it's fortified with spirits. The Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit. <laughs> All right. So I'm going to pour myself a little bit of this in the world's most adorable mason jar. It is. It's very small. Um, and then, Jaron, you said you wanted some. Yeah, just give me a little bit. Just a little bit. I just All want right. a little taste. Just a nice little taste. I might have, if this ends up being terrible, I might have poured myself a bit too much, to be honest. That's what I saw you pour, and I was like, oh, I'll take less than that. Here. Let's see how it smells first. Uh, it smells like church wine. Yeah, it does definitely smell like church wine. That's not terrible. That's like that's not absolutely terrible. For never having wine before, it, it yeah, it tastes like it, church wine. <laughs> it tastes, it, it's not quite as, like, bitter as church wine. Yeah, I think, yeah. I think it's uh, smoother than church wine. I think for five bucks, it's pretty <laughs> yeah, tasty. Yeah. It also has 17% alcohol by uh, by volume, so... Uh, Is that a lot, or... I mean, that's around the same as, like, the mead that I like to drink, so... Okay. And it's way cheaper in the yeah, same but... size bottle, <laughs> so... I think of my, I might have found Kale's... Uh, tasty get messed up drink. <laughs> anyway, uh, we're about 15 minutes into this <laughs> podcast. So uh, today we listened to the album Flesh Coffin by Lorna Shore. Now, Lorna Shore is a deathcore band from Warren County, New Jersey. They got started in 2010. Uh, their lead vocalist is Tom Barber or Tom Barber. Uh, they've, their lead guitarist is Adam DiMicho. The drummer is Austin Archie, and their rhythm guitarist is Connor Defley. Apparently, they don't have a bassist, which is interesting. I don't know if they use, like, eight-string guitars or anything. There's a lot of really deep chugs, so that would make sense. Um, originally, they had uh, a much, I guess, lighter sound, uh, but they got progressively heavier as they went along until they released... Uh, Maleficium in 2013, which is their third EP um, that was officially kind of the start of their deathcore career. It reached number three on the iTunes metal chart, and it was their first non-digital only release. Um, I've listened to that album quite a bit. Um, This is a band I'm relatively familiar with, but Flesh Coffin came out last year, and I've just been sleeping on it for a really long time. 
just because I've had, you know, other bands that I've started listening to. Before we start talking about the album itself, I'll, I guess I should mention, this is the first band, I think, that we've had on the, on the show that I've actually seen live. Uh, okay. I saw them live in Moorhead, Minnesota. I was right up front in the crowd for their show. It's a really low stage, so I was basically kind of face-to-face -face with Tom. And uh, afterwards, I took a, a picture with him. That was one of the pictures that was in my senior recital okay. that you saw. That was one of the guys. A really chill dude. I think he was pretty high. Probably. <laughs> that night, probably. He, he seemed like he was. Uh, his eyes kind of had a glaze over them. I think he probably was smoking some of the devil's lettuce beforehand. <laughs> Which I've I've seen them do on Instagram before. Yeah. So uh, maybe it wasn't Instagram. It might have been Twitter. I think Instagram might have like rules against that or some yeah some such. But uh, no, uh, uh, he he seemed to be riding high that night. But uh, I'm assuming too during the concert he grabbed the oh, microphone <laughs> and he said. Kale Borner, in a few years when you have a podcast about metal music, bring up the fact that I'm stoned right now. <laughs> yes, he said exactly that. And, and you I were had like, no idea you were like, what, what the heck meant. is he talking about? I had no idea what that meant, but now it all makes sense. Yes. Uh, now, it, now it all makes a lot of sense. But He's yeah, a they, genius. <laughs> they, uh, they put on a really good show. I saw them with uh, Within the Ruins, Carnifex, and Buried Above Ground. And who else was there? Oh, last ten, last ten seconds of life were there as well. Uh, that was a really good, really good show, really good night. About the album itself, what did you think? I liked it. I thought it was a good um, get back into the swing of things album. Yeah, uh, back into the swing of things and kind of back into like into really heavy stuff. Yeah, we've been on a we've been on a prog bender for a yeah. while, and so this was uh, back into the more you know heavy and brutal type stuff. Yeah, some of what we started with. So, uh, yeah, it's, it's, it's nice to get back into the swing of things with an album like this. Anything in particular that, that stood out to you that Some made of the, you like it? the, I don't know if they're riffs or the guitar, like, I don't know what you'd call it. I, uh, it must've been the second song he went on like a, like a, so, like a solo. Yeah. And it was, it just, I was sitting there and I was like, whoa. <laughs> yeah. There's, there's some relatively impressive guitar work on this album. I was a little worried going in because the only other Deathcore album we've listened to was Ovid's Withering, and both of us didn't really care for that one too mm -hmm. much. So, and and I've known Lorna Shore to be a bit on the chuggy side sometimes, depending upon the song. But yeah, generally speaking, I like this album quite a bit. I've always been a little shaky on Tom Barber's low vocals. I don't know if he gets really close up to the microphone, but he, it sounds like he's gargling the microphone <laughs> throughout the whole thing. And uh, it's really, really hard to understand mm -hmm. what he's saying. Um, and it's not even like a, a super low guttural or anything. And he does do those, and those are even harder to understand. Yeah. But like, just his standard low vocal is difficult to understand. And his high vocals are so raspy. Uh, they're a lot. They're a lot raspier than any other vocalist I can think of, other than a couple like black metal bands mm -hmm. I've listened to a little bit. It sets him apart and makes him really easy to recognize amongst other vocalists. But I'm not sure whether or not I like them a ton. Yeah. But I think they work really well with the type of music that they deliver. Um, I there wasn't like a a, a particular song that stuck out to me that I really really liked. The, the one that pops out to me when I look at it on Spotify is Favuneral Moon. <laughs> I I just got to say, I don't like it when bands use Vs as a substitute for Us. Yeah. I don't like it. I think it's really kitschy and just, it's it's really kitschy and like overplayed because mm. it's like, oh, the, the whole true cult metal type thing where they use a, you know, the, the V for the U and it's just... It's just so overplayed at this point. It started as like a black metal thing, <coughs> and now uh, you've got bands like Paris, who I think it's I think it's supposed to be Paris or maybe it's Puris. I don't mm. know. I've heard some people call them Paris, but they they do that too with the the V for a U, and they're like a like a poppy type band, and it's like just. It's time to give up. Stop use stop using these yeah. for for use. That's like the equivalent of in movies when it's like the third movie and they instead of an E they put a 3 there. Yeah. Oh god. It's the worst. <laughs> it's it's just so embarrassing almost. Yeah. Or fan four stick or whatever. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> oh, fan four stick. Yeah. 
that uh, that's that whole movie is embarrassing. Yeah, that I felt bad for Miles Teller. Oh man, coming I... off coming off of Whiplash, and yeah. then the next movie of his that comes out is freaking Fan Four Stick. Like bad. poor Miles Teller. Yeah, and I like I remember watching a trailer for that, and I wanted it to be so good. I was like, this this should be cool, and then it went to crap. We just need like a really good Fantastic Four movie. Not that I'm a huge comic book nerd, but I find the concept of the Fantastic Four as a team where pretty much all of them, except for maybe Johnny Blaze, pretty much all of them are scientists first. Yeah, and Johnny Blaze is the Ghost Rider. Oh, that's... <laughs> <laughs> that's Nicholas Cage. <laughs> See, I said I'm not a comic book guy. I wanted I wanted to jump in right away, but I was like, oh, wait. I'm going to let him embarrass himself. <laughs> Well, I didn't want to not bring it up either because okay, so that takes away my nerd Johnny cred. Storm. No, Johnny Storm. Yeah. Johnny Storm. They're both Marvel characters. <laughs> yeah. And they light on fire. True. True. What's the fucking difference? <laughs> One of them just burns their skin off when they light on I fire. I guess. I guess. And he rides a motorcycle. Yeah. Hey, Johnny Storm rides a motorcycle sometimes. <laughs> That's so true. they're the same character. <laughs> Why hasn't anyone explored that? <laughs> Comic book writers. I need a. a, a I need a new comic book run where Johnny Blaze and Johnny Storm like get Switch shoved in, or they get shoved into like a some sort of a fusion machine. <laughs> they perform the fusion dance from Dragon Ball Z and they become the same person. Oh, man, I wonder what that would look like. Somebody um tweet in a picture <laughs> of a fan art. Yeah, somebody photoshopped that together. Okay, so what we were talking about Lorna Shore, right? Yeah, yeah it bothers me when people substitute fees for use and do all that sort of stuff uh, lorna shore has also done this uh a uh, fair amount or at least i think they have where they'll use like backslashes in their titles and that sort of stuff bothers me too yeah because it's like just call your song the watcher instead of the slash slash watcher what's the point of that yeah it looks like a url when you <laughs> when you put a bunch of that it stuff doesn't in it's it. There's no purpose. Yeah. There's no purpose to that. Quit doing it. It doesn't look cool. It's embarrassing. Uh, it's like, I, I still haven't seen it, and it's been on a watch list of mine for a while, and I, ha I have Amazon Prime, so I could watch it, in, like, now, mm -hmm. but there's this movie called The Witch, but the title is spelled with two Vs instead of a W. Yeah. So it's The Vivitch, and <laughs> I've heard the movie's really good, but it's like, why do you... Why not just why? put a W? Why not just put a W? A W. A W. Put a, put a W in there. Hi, I'm George W. Bush. I'm in the movie. I'm in the movie The Witch. <laughs> I am the witch. <laughs> <laughs> I, 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 play, I play the witch in the movie. <laughs> oh, man. Uh, that would be great. That would be great. I uh, also want him to sing vocals on their this uh, band's next album. George W. Bush. George Walker Bush. And George Walker Bush. Replacing Tom Barber as the vocalist. I want of um, of Shore. Tom to pr provide the backup. So his, oh, he's okay. still doing the screams, but then George, George is, is just, just talking doing, like, over it. Yeah. <laughs> That's I some... am the witch. <laughs> 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 rah, rah, rah. I am the witch. <laughs> That's... <laughs> That is so dumb. It is dumb. That is some next level stupidity, Jaron. <laughs> and I am impressed and proud. Oh my god, uh, that is that is really stupid. It is. But, so was uh, George W. <laughs> <laughs> Nuclear. 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 I, that's another that's another pet peeve of mine when people say nuclear. Nuclear. It's nuclear. It's like, look at the spelling. Practice your phonics. <laughs> All right, guys, did nobody do Hooked on Phonics when they were a kid? Come on. I haven't thought about that in a long time. <laughs> I think about Hooked on Phonics every day because <laughs> I see people say nuclear, and I immediately think, Hooked on Phonics, why aren't you doing it? What's wrong with you people? I don't know. Anything else we got to say about this album, or do we want to talk about movies more? I don't know. <laughs> I feel like we're gonna get sidetracked. All right, we again. got five. We got five minutes left. Let's talk about movies. Yeah. Uh, I was describing this podcast to a person the other day, and uh, uh, I was like, you know, we usually talk about the album for about ten minutes, and then we just talk about like movies or comic books yeah. or something. 
uh, have you seen any like movie trailers that uh, were interesting to you lately? Ooh, um, I I heard. I don't know if you n- know about the Venom movie. I I have. I watched the trailer for the Venom movie that, that had, was completely lacking. Yeah, two seconds of like you see Venom in like symbiote, a box. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Uh, there were rumors going around that that whole movie is just Tom Hardy running around as Tom Hardy, and then the last five minutes he puts the suit on and does like one cool thing. Oh uh, God! Which like I don't I don't think they should have made this movie, or at least they Sony shouldn't, shouldn't have, yeah, have made this they movie. Sh- they should have just get Sony, just get it through your head. <laughs> You don't get to make Spider-Man stuff anymore, okay? Yes, yeah, yeah, like stop. You can you can get the money from Marvel, but Just like you don't up. get to make it. Yeah. Um, but apparently Tom Hardy came out and was like, "No, all that is trash." Like it, the Venom suit is in the movie. It's, okay. And, which it better be cuz like I love Tom Hardy and I have no doubt that he could make I mean, that movie a, great. He's but... a really good actor, but I don't know. I don't trust anything that Sony puts out. I don't know if we've talked about this before, but like there was one movie that I watched recently where I was like, holy crap, Sony produced that? It was good. Because pretty much every other, I don't remember what movie it was, but pretty much every other movie that I've seen or heard about that Sony Pictures has produced in like the last three years has been trash. Yeah. Yeah. It's just been trash. Like the new Ghostbusters, like every Adam Sandler movie. Yeah. And I, I do not like Adam Sandler at all. I don't think he's funny anymore. I think he used to be funny. Yeah. I like The Water Boy a lot. I like uh, I like Happy Gilmore. The Longest Yard. I, I like The Longest Yard. I even like Click. Yeah. Of all movies. I don't think Click is that terrible. It's not amazing, but like it... Uh, it's a pretty fun concept. It's a fun concept, and as cheesy as it is, it still manages to like elicit an emotional reaction out of me. Yeah, which d- doesn't necessarily mean it's good, but it accomplishes that. Yeah, and uh, you know that at the very least gives it a couple points. But everything, I think, everything that Adam Sandler has made that has been produced by Happy Madison since Click has just been trash. Jack and Jill is not even a movie. That that movie is an excuse to have 90 minutes of product placements. And like, I I don't know why that was a thing either or like I guess it's a I don't even want to say fine concept, but who who let him do that? Like I think I, I just don't know. Almost any time that uh, an actor plays two different characters in a movie and it's a comedy and one of the and they're a male comedic actor and one of those characters is female or obese yeah or both the movie then is going to first of all not be very great yeah yeah. and it's second of all going to start the downhill slide of their career yep like Eddie Murphy, once he started doing The Nutty Professor. Yeah. The Nutty Professor itself is not a bad movie, but it started this trend of Eddie Murphy playing multiple characters in each one of his movies, and they got progressively worse as they went yeah. on until he just doesn't really do movies anymore and just decided, I'm going to stop acting and just, you know, live off all the shit zillion dollars I made. Yeah. Um, you said that um, it doesn't always work when it's a man trying to play a woman or o- and somebody obese. Uh, have you've se- have you seen um, Big Mama's House? No, and I don't want to. I haven't seen that movie in years. Like it's been so mm-hmm. long. Like I was a kid when I saw it, but I have very fond memories of okay. that movie being like really funny and really good because he's like a cop. Yeah. That gets put on, and he you know he's got the the fake fat suit and. And I probably would watch it today and be like, ugh, why did I say that this is like a good thing? But I just remember I thought that movie was so funny, and I don't know okay. why. See, and like uh, Tyler Perry movies are also like movies that do not appeal to me at all. Mm-hmm. They're, I, I recognize they're not supposed to. They're, I recognize that Tyler Perry movies are not for me, but whenever I see a trailer, I'm like, God, why does he... <laughs> Why Who's is, giving him money to do? Why that? is he still allowed to make these? Like they, they never are. They never do well critically. They do well financially, which is why he keeps on making them. Yeah. He's made a, He's made so much money off of them. 
Oprah, I think Oprah's responsible for Tyler Perry, yeah. to be honest. She's she she gave us Tyler Perry. I know I watched some other movie trailers recently that I wanted to talk about. I have a quick story while you're thinking. Okay. I've been watching The Walking Dead um, upon my girlfriend's request. And I've, I've obviously there's some parts where it really, really drags. But it's kind of kicking back up and it's been really interesting. What season are you on? Uh, five. I'm in the middle of five. Okay, five is not bad. Yeah. Um, it starts to get boring again after five. I, I'm sorry I, to say. I, yeah, I'm sure it does. But um, so I've been watching it and I can't remember the character's name off the top of my head. But it's, I and I don't know his name. It's the actor that played in Everybody Hates Chris. Oh, yeah. I don't remember his name. But uh, the character is Eli. Yeah, yeah. Um, so Eli came, and I was like, oh my gosh, it's Chris Rock. Like, <laughs> jo- jokingly, yeah, like, it was yeah. supposed to be a pun. And um, I was on the phone with my girlfriend, because she likes to, like, keep up with where I am at. I'm at in the show. Mm-hmm. She's like, what did you just say? And I was like, it's Chris Rock. Ha ha. <laughs> and she's like, that's racist. That's blah, blah, blah. And she's like, starts getting mad yeah. at me. And I was like, wait a minute. Have you never seen Everybody Hates Chris? Yeah. And she's like, no, what's, what's that? And I was like, well, he played a young chris yeah, rock he plays a, <laughs> like a fictional version of young chris yeah. rock so it's like uh, i don't know the actor's <laughs> name but i'm just referring because every yeah. time i see him all i think of is, is everybody, everybody hates, hates chris. chris oh I, I saw a trailer for a movie called sorry to bother you which i think is uh, a very interesting concept it looks kind of funny um it's about this uh, african-american guy who goes to work at a telemarketing company and he gets advice from one of his co-workers to use a white person voice and he becomes like really really successful he's he becomes like the company's top guy and he gets involved in all sorts of like crazy shenanigans and i think it's such an interesting concept for a movie i can't remember who produces that one but i've seen a, a bunch of trailers recently for movies that are produced by the studio a24 and every a24 movie that i've watched has been really good okay um and like so for me, when I see a trailer and at the beginning I see that plate that says produced by A24, I'm like, oh, hey, you've got my attention now. Yeah, yeah. Because uh, I watched, I th- I think, I think Deus, not Deus Ex, that's a video game. I think Ex Machina was produced by A24, and I really, really liked that movie. I know that Green Room was produced by A24, and that was one of my favorite movies that I watched in the last year. Um, it uh, It's about a, a punk band. Uh, that gets trapped in like this this skinhead venue that they performed at because they witness uh, this person getting murdered, mm-hmm. and so they get trapped in this venue. And uh, the leader of the skinheads, of all people, is Patrick Stewart. <laughs> oh gosh, who does really well in a in a very sinister role. And yeah. it's just a, it's a really really good movie, and a I think they portray a lot of the music in the film and the whole punk ethic, and mm-hmm. uh, even you know some moments of uh, you know like death metal and that sort of thing, some of the other bands that are performing at this place. I think they portray the whole culture and especially kind of the the much maligned and rightfully so skinhead aspect of, of metal and punk. And, you know, uh, one, one of the songs that they perform, because <laughs> they know that this place is a skinhead place, they play, uh, I believe it's the Dead Kennedys song, uh, Nazi Punks Fuck Off. <laughs> And that pisses off like the entire crowd and people start throwing stuff at them. And then eventually they win them back with some of their other songs. But uh, certainly didn't help the situation that arises later. <laughs> but uh, no, it's a really good movie. Uh, I would recommend people check out A24's catalog. It's really good stuff. This is a movie podcast now. Yep. All right. We're, we're definitely at time. So before we go, I would encourage you guys to check us out on social media. We're on Twitter, Facebook, instagram you can check us out there follow us i'll probably post a picture of the two of us enjoying uh, a little bit of wild irish rose which honestly has not soured on me this is this is not terrible it yeah, it tastes okay that's uh, i think that's a glowing recommendation yeah. for this segment is <laughs> it's for not five, terrible <laughs> for a five dollar bottle of fortified wine it could taste much worse, but then again, I am not a wine connoisseur, so if you are a person that likes wine, it's probably terrible, but I drink whiskey, so yeah, <laughs> this is this is okay. Um, Jaron, tell them about uh, where they can listen to us. You can listen to us on YouTube. You can listen to us on Libsyn. 
you can listen to us on iTunes. And you should, if you're on YouTube, leave a comment. Um, iTunes, leave a, a review of how great uh, you think this podcast <laughs> is and how great you think Wild Irish Rose is if you've had it before. <laughs> yeah, if you're a fan <laughs> of $5 Wild Irish Rose, go ahead and let us know. Yeah, um, and Libsyn, do you comment on there and write reviews? Uh, I think you can. Okay. If, <laughs> if you know Libsyn know. better than we do, yeah. you know, send us a message Just on there. T- tell people, spread the word. Yeah. Spread the word about this podcast. I would I would like to thank everybody who listened to this episode. I know we were gone for a while, but uh, we're happy to be back. Did we miss anything? I don't think so. Social media places to listen to. I think it's the end of the episode. I think so too. What's our sign off again? We have nothing left to we say. We have left we, yeah, we have nothing left to say. Could we do <laughs> Wild Irish Rose ain't bad. <laughs> Let's do it. <laughs> Once again, thank you all very much for listening to the Bronze Medalist Podcast. My name is Kale. My name is Jared. And Wild Irish Rose ain't bad. Not too bad at all. Ah, oh, that's not a great sign off. Huh? <laughs> <laughs>